Welcome back to another episode of Catchy Square Plays Asagao Academy. My name is Bobby. I'm Kim Andre. And last time I don't remember what happened. It's been two weeks. We we uh, went to the library, met up with Gerard. Gerard's like, hey, I'm going to show you the campus. And then we went to the boys' dorms. We met uh, Kat Icarus and Jimmy Wetzel. That's right. And then now we're going to continue our tour of Asagao Academy with Gerard. And, and my and, phone says ding. And in those two weeks, I was supposed to be watching some of these videos to get the voices down. And I haven't. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. Also, uh, none of the voices from before are probably going to be the same as they are now. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. We... I remember somebody was Australian. I don't remember who. Right. <laughs> I was one of the continue guys, but I, I can never tell them apart. Um, anyway, sorry. Sorry, continue. Let's continue. That's Azalea Arts Center. There's a recording booth and lots of spare room for clubs to meet in. The theater is right next to it. That's where John holds the drama club and all his rehearsals. I think the student council elections are held there, and Jared has a special event at least once a semester. Last year it was a martial arts exhibition, and Jared did, did kendo against other practitioners in the school. He shook his head in awe. See what I mean? He's truly talented. Really, all my friends are. I think I'm really lucky to have friends like that around me. Ah, Gerard. Oh, Gerard. <laughs> yeah? I'm sorry, did you have a question? No, 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 that's all right. Great! Over there you can see Higanbana peeking out in the distance. There's a field separating us and people like to eat there. Gerard seemed fearful, grateful, down-to-earth kind of person. He was really going out of his way to help me out and be kind to me, and didn't even seem to realize what a big deal that was. <laughs> I giggled. Something told me I shouldn't point it out. Despite that, I was truly thankful. He took me to the places my did and more, describing everything and several past events in excruciating detail. It was a little much for a friendly tour, but having the names and locations of the buildings burned into my mind was a good thing. We ended the tour back in Poppy Hall after what seemed like hours of walking. Gerard was keen on finishing off the tour with the best place on campus. <laughs> Ta-da! Here it is, the normal booth's classroom! Close enough. Whatever, close enough. <laughs> He pushed the door open and pointed inside. It looked like a, rec a rectangular room. That's not even close. <laughs> a regular room <laughs> filled with desks and some kinds of toys. It's not much, but it's home to some of my happiest memories. He shut the door again and dusted his hands. Look at this sensual face. Oh, yeah. There's a little clo closet here people use to store things, too. It looks like he's going to complete you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He reached to turn the handle, but paused and then retracted his hand. Was that a shutter I saw? Uh... Just a little tip. Knock before you open the door to any closet on campus. Really? Why? Yes, why? Good question, Hannah. Oh, you know, ghosts, I guess. Yeah, okay, Gerard. Oh, oh it was a spooky ghost! Yeah. <laughs> oh, he slimed me! <laughs> that was strange advice, <laughs> delivered strangely. <laughs> Gerard was uncomfortable. I wasn't sure what to make of it. He knocked and a few seconds later opened the door. What the fuck? Yeah, okay, I don't know what that is. Someone was in that closet. I was not expecting someone in that closet. <laughs> Why was someone in the closet? Hey! Hey! No, I'm in the closet. Gerard waved to the person and closed the door, turning back to me. <laughs> what the? Sorry if he scared you. <laughs> What? <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Anyways, that's it for the tour. How was <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> he beamed. I hesitated, but seeing his eye twitch slightly, thought better than to bring it back up. It was awesome. Thank you so much. I learned a lot about the school and about you and your friends. It really made me feel included. <laughs> no problem. Not at all. I like helping out. I wish I had someone to show me around when I first got here. You have no idea how long it took me to find all the secret tunnels and make a complete map of the campus. Secret tunnels? Oh, absolutely! Yeah! Oh man, I gotta show you. Gerard glanced at the clock hanging on the wall and winced. Oh. Darn, I gotta get going. I have homework to do. But if you ever need more help, I'm here for you. He got out a notebook and scribbled something down. Then he ripped it out and gave it to me. Here. My phone number, dorm number, address, parents' phone number, email, Facebook, and blipper information. Don't hesitate to ask me anything. Really? Oh yeah, feel free to give that to me, Gerard. Yeah, especially that Facebook information. Yeah, I'm all into fa uh, Facebook. I want to see what it is, because I want to steal it. Yeah. And blipper. 
I'll see you later, Hana. It was really great spending time with you. Okay, bye. Just like that, he was gone. Can we... <laughs> can we go open the closet? I want to see who the fuck that was in the closet. I put the paper in my bag, chuckling softly to myself, then paused. I... I had to check. Oh, come on. We were in front of the supply closet the whole time, and I'd fought the urge to open the door after Gerard closed it. Now I was going to see who was in there. Yes. <laughs> Darkness. The light was off this time. God damn it. <laughs> I slid my hand across the wall looking for the switch and flipped it. There was no one in the closet. I froze, still as the paints and construction paper that lined the walls. He wasn't in here, and this was the only exit. I closed the door, blinked hard, and walked straight back to my dorm room. Uh, forget about it. Just forget about it. Ignoring that last incident, Gerard truly went out of his way to show he was thinking about me. In fact, I got the impression that he was this way for everyone. Maybe even everything. We need to figure out what the fuck was in that closet. <laughs> <laughs> he was thorough. Very thorough. And when he wanted to help you, he did everything in his power to do so. Maybe it hadn't meant much to him. Maybe, but it meant a lot to me. I returned to the dorm and crawled into bed with a smile on my face, ready to take on the next day. Good for you, Hana. This time, I knew I wouldn't get lost. What the fuck? Maya and I arrived at Poppy Hall the next morning, and it immediately became clear something changed. Posters drenched in nausea-inducing neon colors were plastered on the lockers. Several students gathered to take a look. <sighs> my gosh. <laughs> We walked over to one of the walls to get a better look. Is that... Jared? When Mai didn't respond, I turned to look at her. The expression on her face told me that her mind wandered somewhere else that would have made a call girl blush. Damn, girl! Let's yeah. do it! Real thirsty. Should be in Shimonetta so thirsty. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> quite a bit of thirst. <laughs> Mai, you're drooling! She was drooling out of the right place, unlike Shimonetta. Oh, shit. That seemed to great jolt her out of her fantasy. <laughs> she lifted a sleeve to wipe away the drivel on her chin. <gasps> I'm not. What are these posters for? Well, last year Jared put on a fashion show. It looks like he's doing it again this year. I didn't know Jared was into fashion. Look how he sparkles. Of course he's into fashion. Yeah, one sparkly boy. My shrugged. <laughs> he's not. I waited for some type of clarification. One time, in biology, I saw him take off his sweater and his shirt kind of got stuck to it and pulled up and I swear he had like 20 abs. I waited in vain. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Oh no. Mai and I whipped around. There stood Jared in all his glittering, magnificent glory. Maya's face turned to blushing pink, like it wasn't already. Yeah. The most beautiful guy in school. <laughs> I see you're admiring my totally sweet posters. Um, yeah. They're really something, Jared. Uh, I I like your abs. <laughs> That's the way to get it on. With sudden soul-crushing realization of what she said, her expression twisted into a mixture of horror and disgust. <laughs> Jared was unfazed. Hana? Thanks, but Hana... <laughs> It was actually you I wanted to speak to. Look, I wish that I could be like that and just like someone's like, I like your abs. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> Why would he want to talk to me? Oh, I, yeah. Okay. What's up? Jared looked expectantly at Mai. She didn't move. Realizing she was in trouble, I nudged her with my elbow as subtly as I could. Hey! Mai, would you go get me a soda? I'm, I'm really thirsty. Not as thirsty as you, you dirty hoe, but yeah, still thirsty. that's real. Mm. Without a word, Mai scuttled away. Like a like a crab. Yeah. It's whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. Jared turned back to me, a cool <laughs> glint in his eye. He seemed used to the effect he had on women. Well. I wanted to talk to you about the fashion show, actually. You're new here and all, so you probably don't know, but every year I like to put on a little fashion show to showcase my modeling skills. What? Wait, what? Hmm. You know, just to make sure people don't forget what I'm capable of. He reached into his pocket, pulled out a stack of glossy photos, and thrust them into my hands. I stared down at them in awe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic pro Jared photo, by the way. Nice. I flipped through them, starting to notice a pattern. 
As you can tell, my beauty is something that simply can't go to waste. I like to hold a fashion show here at Asagao Academy to ensure everyone gets their yearly dose of Pro Jared. I flipped to the last photo. Heat shot up my neck and into my ears. Surely this was some kind of joke. I shoved the stack of photos back at him, wiping my sweaty palms against my skirt. What does this have to do with me? Suspicious face. Yes. Ah, uh, that might have been a touch rude. Jared, as smooth as ever, simply smiled. You're perfect. I think you have potential, Hana. He suddenly leaned in close to me, so close in fact that I could smell his cologne. A musky, sweet aroma of earthy scents and ham. <laughs> P potential for what exactly? Jared shifted, his mouth so close to my ear I could feel its heat. It's hammy heat. For greatness. He reached into his shirt pocket and retrieved a small slip of paper. With quivering hands, I accepted it. All right. My card. My number's on the bottom. If you're ever interested, I can teach you a thing or two about modeling. I stared down at the card in my hand, feeling that if I looked away, it would disappear. By the time I gathered the courage to face him again, Jared was gone. Feeling quite dizzy, I headed for class. The business card strangled to death in my white-knuckled hand. By the time I got the million students to the classroom, Mai was sitting at her desk, face down and completely still. Where's my soda, bitch? Yeah. I took my seat and twisted around to poke the dejected Mai-shaped heap. She didn't budge. She's dead. Hey! Mai! Mai! Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> I heard a muffled groan of despair. I can't believe this. I'm such a social disaster. <laughs> no, you're not. I tried to sound comforting, but I was never good at this sort of thing. Mai finally lifted her head from her desk. What's that? She motioned to the business card that was still in my hand. I set it in front of her. Mai appraised it for a long minute with a blank face, as if I, was, if I set a rare artifact in front of her that she didn't actually believe was real. Like, what could a guy just carries around, like, a business card to hand out to, like, random women? <laughs> a lot of guys. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It's not. <laughs> Just a QR code. Yeah. Then her eyebrows pulled together. <laughs> he gave you his number? Well... Well, yeah. Sort of. I mean, not really. He said I should call him if I wanted to teach me how to model like him. It was embarrassing to even say, and the words felt awkward in my mouth. The moment I said them out loud, <laughs> I wish I could grab them back and swallow them. <laughs> I expected Mai to give me a once-over before making an off-the-cuff comment about how I wasn't nearly pretty enough to be a model, and how I need to learn how to read. But she didn't. Yeah. He, like, totally wants to get with you? Her tone was so matter-of-fact, I gaped. What? No, he doesn't. Why would you say that? Bingo. Okay, Hana. I've taken enough sex ed classes to know when a guy fully wants you, and Jared, like, fully wants you. Oh yeah? You can tell by her knowing shit eating grit. Mortified, I snatched the business card back off her desk and shoved it into my jacket pocket, turning away. My cheeks felt like they were on fire. By now the classroom was filled with students. They chatted amongst themselves, but the white noise of the conversations wasn't loud enough to drown my out. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see John and PBG seated at their desks in the back of the classroom. <laughs> I'm talking seriously grabby hands in the back of the, his dad's Camaro. Here, you're gonna make babies with pro Jared, Hana. Little, glittering, Jared babies. <laughs> what the fuck? I like that. No, I'm not. I'm a Satch girl. You're totally crazy. I, I don't know what you're talking about. We could absolutely accidentally end up romancing somebody that we're not meaning to romance, by the way. Yeah, so but I want Satch. We want Satch, but we'll see if that ends up happening. <laughs> Miss Shizuka, like some kind of angel, cleared her throat at the front of the class. I exhaled gratefully and sunk down in my seat. Oh, I guess I'm not having to do her voice. Oh, okay. You are lucky. When class finally <laughs> ended, Mai and I headed for the, the catheter. The incident forgotten in her hurried attempt to explain Miss Shizuka's scandalous last relationship. Was it scandalous? Seriously, he spent all his time trying to choose between her and some dead chick who only liked him because he looked like her ex-boyfriend. The fuck? Interesting. I mean, who does that? We got our food and hesitated in the middle of the room, looking at the normal boots table. 
Neither of us wanted to go up and demand a seat, especially after wiggling our way in the day before. What if they change their minds? But Satch, noticing us standing like lost lambs in the middle of the room, waved us over. Satch notices us. He is the Satch man. Yeah. There you go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I got a little wet from that. Uh, okay, Thomas Castillo. Yeah. Uh, hey, girl. How was class? That's not right. That's not right. Oh, you know. Normal? With boots. Yeah. <laughs> Satch nodded and turned away, having been in the middle of talking to Josh. That was... awkward. Despite how familiarly he treated me, I still didn't know how to talk to him, or any of them. That's what I get for having read multiple books since reading Superpowers, as I already forgot. Look what You're I've right. done. You should only read Superpowers. I agree! I looked across <laughs> the table and locked eyes with PBG, who stared at me like I was a baby German Shepherd. What a very oddly specific thing to PBG say. PBG has German Shepherds. Okay, so, that makes more sense yeah. now. <laughs> Still weird. You... You Cookies <laughs> No you were like Cookies oh, Every time you talked with Paul That's right That's right Okay Cookies Yeah He's there gonna do the thumbs up yes. And the And the Lighty oh, little... dighty 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 yeah. yeah Just like that Yeah What What Oh sick You brought us cookies You're the best Gerard Paul sprang out of his chair <laughs> And practically tackled Gerard Whoa, calm down! There's more than enough cookies to go around! Is, is, Gerard started passing the cookies around the table, but paused. Is Gerard the kind to, uh, hmm? break cookies? You, you're back again! He looked at Mai and me. I tried to ignore the disappointment on his face. Well... Well, here. He handed us each a cookie, then headed back across the catheter. I stared at the small co chocolate chips melting in my warm cookie. Did he not want us here? The warm but, cookie, not my warm cookie. The uh, other one. I'm had. thinking of my warm cookie. Oh, oh, okay. Um, but, but he was so nice yesterday. I didn't even want to eat the cookie. Not if he was going to be as two faced as that. Hey! hey! <laughs> <laughs> Watch your way, you're walking the next time. This is gonna be awkward. A sheep as Gerard stood next to a short, skinny boy who was holding his tray above his head. I'm sorry. I'll be more careful. Oh, you! You're from a normal boots! Wait, you're the guy who plays with itty bitty kitties, aren't you? You better watch how you say that. The boy sneered. How the hell did you manage to get in with a group like that? Huh? Huh? They're my friends. Playing with those stupid dolls. You're an embarrassment. The kid's friends were hitting his shoulders, looking from Gerard to our table with panicked eyes. I think they're fun! What is he talking about? What? The itty bitty kitties that he collects? I, I don't know about that. Oh. That, that was that was something that I mentioned before. Is that he, he wants to complete his collection of itty bitty kitty dolls. Yeah, I thought that was like a throwaway joke. No, it's a real joke. Thing. Oh. Good for him. It's their way to have him complete something. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. But does he collect itty bitty kitty dolls? I mean, he, he collects completed games in real life. I don't know. I don't follow everything that he does. Just most of it. Just most of it. Yeah. I missed the podcast. I learned a lot more about him there. We should find some itty-bitty kitty dolls and send them to him. I agree. He probably has some. Probably. Yeah. He probably has more than some. Whatever! <laughs> the kid was let off by his friends. Gerard came back and sat down at the table. <laughs> that was weird. Gerard sat down and began happily munching on his cookie, looking for all the world like he didn't even care about what just happened. I scanned the catheter for the boy who heckled him and found him sitting alone at the table, head in his hands. His friends left him behind. Uh, what was that about? Oh, that? I used it. I used to get it all the time. I collect itty bitty kitty figurines. You know the kid show with the five kittens who live in Kitten Town? It's My Little yeah, it's Pony. My little Get pony. It. Okay. They were originally supposed to have magic powers, but whatever. I collect the figurines. They're so cute. Does Gerard do My Little Pony? I don't think so. It's possible. We should rewatch their playthrough of Asuka Academy. He probably mentions it. Probably. I've almost gotten them all. I'm, all, I'm only missing Princess Pumpernickel. She's the rarest. But why was that guy making fun of you? Doesn't it bother you? 
Oh, fuck that guy. I was afraid of bringing up bad feelings, but Gerard just shook his head. It looks kind of weird, right? A teenage boy collecting toys meant for little girls. Uh-huh. But I like them, so I don't let it bother me. Good for you, man. Sorry I didn't bring enough cookies the first time, Hana. I forgot that you were joining us again, but I'm glad you're here. I bit my lip. See, Hana? He was being nice the whole time, and here you were jumping to conclusions. Oh, do your knees hurt <laughs> from all that jumping to conclusions? I just watched that episode yesterday. <laughs> It's the best show. Ah, oh, Gravity Falls, man. It's, it's awesome. amazing. Playing that opening hurts my fingers, though. Hey, your cookie will get cold if you don't eat it. How are you having hot cookies here, dude? Did you just, like, just bring them from the oven and then go directly to lunch? Look, Gerard is the guy that I can fully believe would just walk around with a little toaster, easy-bake oven <laughs> just to give cookies to his friends. An itty-bitty kitty toaster oven. That's, yeah, we need to make that and yeah, give it to him. we'll paint it. Yeah. I unwrapped the cookie. Scents of chocolate and cinnamon hit me. I broke off a piece and popped it in my mouth. Gerard whispered something into Nick's ear, who started laughing so hard milk came out of his nose. That's not Was milk. Was he really okay with people making fun of him? What is it, then? What are you trying to imply that he has coming out of his nose that looks like milk? Oh? Nothing. I'm the one who just watched Shimonetta. Uh -huh. I'm the one who's supposed to have the fucking fucked up brain right now. No, dude, that's like your first step to get on my level. No, yeah, I, I'm, I've always been like that. I run, a, I run a whole Facebook page just about that. Yes, he does. Uh, <laughs> was he really okay with people making fun of him? I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe it. At my old school, people made fun of me every day. It was hell. There was no way he could just brush it off like that. Not when I tried to, so hard to do it the same. Well, maybe different people react to different things in different ways. Yeah, not everybody has to be quite as fragile as you, huh? But as I finished the cookie and started on my ramen, and Gerard continued to laugh with the, normal, the rest of the normal boots. The normal boots, yes. I wondered whether it was as impossible as I always thought. Hana? Hana, can you pass me some pepper? Dude, what's with that seductive voice, though, Jared? Like, you gotta calm down when you're asking for pepper. Yeah. I'm gonna what? spice up your life, sir. I got it! Here, Jared! Uh. Yeet! Thanks. Uh, oh, what's your name again? <laughs> Destruction. Ooh. It's my... Nice. Thanks, my... Better be a dick, Jared. Dot, dot, dot. Hannah. Well, hold on, I'm ready to hit back. Huh? Oh, yeah. Did my look sad, or did I imagine it? We threw our trays on the racks and headed out of the catheter. As we waved to normal boots and Gerard cheerily waved back, a sudden pang hit my stomach. Why wasn't Satch waving back? Was it guilt? After class ended that day, Mai said she had volleyball practice and sped off. Thankfully, this time I knew where I was going, so I headed straight back and collapsed on my bed. It was nice to have some time to myself. After everything that happened, I felt like I was going crazy. I could use some relaxation. I didn't have a computer or a TV, and the book Satch gave me was really good, but sometimes got a bit hard to read, because the book is not as good as the movie. Instead, I took out my phone and started flipping through the app store. Oh no, the book's not as good as the movie, because the movie is perfect, and nothing's going to beat it. It's not what a, a shame! It's not a perfect movie. Yes, it, it is. It is close. It's a perfect movie. You can take out all of that swamp bullshit, no, it's, and it's, it's, it's totally suddenly needed. a lot better movie. It's totally needed. Almost the best part. 10 out of 10. Almost the best part? Almost the best part. You gotta love the swamp, man. Only because only the rest of the movie is the best part. Is it almost the best part? Yeah. Oh no, it's a 10 out of 10 where everything's like a 10.1 out of 10. 9.5. No. <laughs> it's a 10. Perfect movie. It's no clue. It's a very different movie. Who's better movie? There's no bad part of Clue. That's what I'm saying. There is a bad part of Princess Bride, but that's the only bad part. It's not a bad part of Princess Bride. You were wrong. Uh huh. We have opinions. Anyways, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I, I hope that you realize that most people are with me on this too. So it works out. Well, that that's fine. They can be with you as much as they want. They're fucking wrong too. Oh, nothing really looked good. Like the R.O.U.S.'s, they look like shit. No, they were great. Wait, what was this? I sat up. Dumba Doom's Revenge? Face off against three other players as you catch monsters, raise them, and use their own unique steals 
to aid you on your puzzle solving quest. <laughs> You're having some problems reading today. Only you can save Metaworld from its ignorant king and utter destruction. Sometimes I just get an accent, okay? Don't worry about it. Now with a single player campaign. Raise crops to feed your monsters. If you're lucky, they'll transform into cute girls. I want that game. That, where's that game? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it looks so stupid. I would play it. But I had to play it. It couldn't hurt to give it a try. Yes. Give in to the dark side. <laughs> I downloaded and started up the game. Welcome to Double Doom's Revenge. I skipped the intro sequence and quickly hit single player. Loading. The load times were terrible. Suddenly, a cartoonish, hilly valley met my eyes, panning over to a white castle nestled next to a cliff. A lazy king lay asleep on a throne when a squat silver soldier ran into the room. King Dumbledore, quickly, we're under attack! Oh, just send the first battalion off, please. I'm rather tired. The knight left, and the screen faded to a world map showing a horde of black blobs on the right side of the screen. The squeen! The squeen! <laughs> you alright? All right. A small group of knights ran up against the blobs and were instantly devoured. Why did you smack yourself? <laughs> to wake myself up, asshole. Like, don't worry about it. One of the black blobs spit out a helmet with a skull inside. What the hell is this game? Things continued in this way, with the king sending off his battalions haphazardly until no one was left. Then the king awoke in his chair and turned to the screen. You! <laughs> Me? Only you can save my kingdom, please! I don't think I can save your kingdom. You're the one menacing it. How dare you! What the hell? Did this thing hear me? You are no longer my advisor. Go back to the home village and let me deal with this myself. A tiny sprite with brown hair flew across the world map, bouncing into a bunch of red houses. I guess my only choice is to raise an army of monsters myself, overthrow the king, and then raise an army to fight the oncoming bloopity bloops. How the hell did you come to that conclusion? Finally, I was allowed to play the actual game. A dozen multicolored blocks appeared on the screen. The monsters I was initially given could only hit their corresponding colors and couldn't activate any traps. Supposedly, more monsters could eventually learn how to set traps, and you could do certain combos to hinder the opposing team. If you had an attractive girl on your team, she could use an ability to double the rate of your opponent's blocks or have their clock time. But that had a drawback for you too, and could be used as an asset by the opponent. Not to mention that certain color combinations between girls and monsters activated unique secret abilities and you could only you could also evolve your monsters and feed them things. How the heck am I supposed to remember all of this? I don't even remember it from five seconds ago. That's right, but I would still play the shit out of the game. I failed the first few times, but quickly got the hang of it. It was just about being adaptable and maintaining a flexible strategy after all. My eyes started to hurt and I looked at the time. Eight o'clock? It had been four hours? I had reading to do. I grabbed my textbook, flipped my radio on, and began to read. There have been many tales of times when the moon has fallen on other planets, the most popular of these being the myth of Termina. Of course it is. However, these myths have been proven to be more than a hallucination. My eyes blurred over my astronomy textbook, and I yawned. Termina is in your astronomy textbook. Okay. Um, what? Termina is the land in Medora's Mask. Oh, okay. Where the moon falls. Thank you. The Schubert piece floated from my radio made me want to go to sleep, and I toyed with the idea of going to class without finishing my reading. Who cared how many times the moon was supposed to fall, especially when time travel was involved? Mai burst in through the f door, flung herself across the room, and grabbed my radio. Hey! Hey! Where have you been? Uh, what are you doing? Uh, Give me a second, we're missing it. <laughs> there we go! But I swear, that dog was the living worst. <laughs> That's why you need a bird, like my lovely jocks. Watch your tongue. What is this? So the time has come to make an official announcement! This year, just like every other year, the Normal Boots Club will be participating in the video game tournament. Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! As PBG applauded <laughs> as though he were a crowd of 30 people, I shot a puzzled glance at mine. I hope you guys will support us again this year, and best of luck to our competitors. You guys are going down! 
And now for some music. My turn down the radio inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you want? Um, um what was that? PB, PB and J. It's PBG and John's radio show. That's hard to say. They have a radio show? What do they do on it? Uh... Oh, you know, they talk and stuff and play music sometimes. Everyone in school listens to it. I'm so glad you brought your radio. I forgot mine at home. And a video game tournament? Yeah, didn't you hear them talking about it the other day? No. Come to think of it, I hadn't paid much attention to their conversations. I was too busy worrying about myself. Yeah, that's what you do most of the time, Hana. Yeah. It's not healthy. You need to see someone. Every year they have a game tournament down at Higan Mall. Lots of people come to compete, but everyone knows the real fight is between the Normal Boots Club and Hidden Block Club. Is that what they do? Video game tournaments? Yeah! That's why nobody's ever joined them since their inception. Well, I guess partly there's a group of friends who just happen to make a club together, but also, unless you're really talented, you just drag them down. Ouch. Not all of them are so harsh, but some of them, well... I glanced away, but I felt like I knew who she was talking about. That's too bad. The conversation I had before with Jimmy and Caddy came to my mind. Had they really thought I was joining the Normal Boots Club? There was no way. I hadn't played a video game since I was a kid. My father gave me a 4DS when I left home, but... Really? 4D? <laughs> 4D! You okay. travel through time. Well, that does happen when you play video games. That, that is true. The night before I left home for Asagao, my dad came to visit me in my room. I had packed the few things I owned into a briefcase in a single cardboard box set to be shipped with the train. I sat and stared at the box, somewhat bitter. I barely even needed it. I didn't own much. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Dad? My father stood in front of me, a wary smile on his face. Even though he tried to hide it, I could see by the deep wrinkles around his eyes and forehead that he was tired. Sad. The past few years had taken their toll on him, and I hadn't eased things. You'll be leaving tomorrow. Yeah. A heavy silence hung between us, filling my childhood bedroom like styrofoam. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, I am. He nodded and glanced around my room, at the pale blue walls, the broken clock above my old desk, the scuff marks around the doorframe from where I ran into it as a kid. I lived in this house almost my whole life, ever since moving after kindergarten. It was everything I knew, but now it was too much for me. The decision to transfer to Asagao didn't come lightly. First, it was a prestigious institution with highly prized reputation. Only the best of the best, touting either great grades, impressive talent, or lots of money could get in. I was none of those things, but I made it in regardless. Part of me suspected I was a charity case. I received a small scholarship, and it would no doubt look good for the academy to have fostered a poverty-stricken child in its walls. I think this is the beginning of uh, Danganronpa, so maybe you should watch out, Hana. Oh yeah? <laughs> and despite the fact that my father couldn't afford it, even with the scholarship, he guaranteed to support me if I went. I looked again at the wrinkles in his face, at his sagging shoulders. He pressed his hands against his body to hide the way they shook. All for me. He'd be all alone. I'm glad you're going. I think this will be good for you. Yeah. I wished I could say something else, but nothing came. Yeah, she said, yeah, a whole lot in this conversation. Well, honey, just in case you get homesick, I brought a present for you. A uh, present? From his pocket, my, das my dad produced a shining pink Gintendo 4DS and placed it into my hands. For you. But... It has no games. Why? <laughs> How? I stole it. Dad, this costs so much. You're already killing yourself to let me go. Why would you... Tears spilled from my eyes as my dad smiled. Nothing is too good for you, my dear Hana. His voice was trembling. You're my pride and joy. You deserve so much better than you've gotten from me. Dad. Go to Asagao. Have fun. Make a lot of friends. And when you get homesick, you'll play with that. I'll make do. I stood up and hugged him, burying my face in his scratchy sweater and oatmeal smell. I wish I smelled like oatmeal. I wish I had scratchy sweaters. No, you don't. 
that's true. I'll miss you. <laughs> I'll miss you, my little Hana. But the thing is, I didn't miss that piece of shit. He forgot to give me a cartridge to play with. That's what I said. It doesn't come with anything. Uh, you want to call it here? I think so. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do a save. Return day four. So we're gonna call it here, and we'll do some shoutouts. Um, I'll start. I'm gonna do a shout out to our main man Satchbag, who we're gonna try to uh, get it in with, if we can. Um, right. We're gonna fuck it up, and then we're gonna play the game. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, but yeah, Satchbag uh, or Satchel Drakes, he has his own YouTube channel called Satchbag's Goods, where he does a lot of kind of uh, video essays or just kind of talking about general concepts. He doesn't upload very often. Um, it's it, sometimes it's even just like once a year, if that. Sometimes so I think he took a couple years off once. He had something recently. I didn't watch that one yet, but I did see it upload. Uh, I think he's also on some sort of podcast. Okay. I, I'm not sure what that's about, but it's probably worth worth listening to. He's also part of Big Bad Bosses with uh, Gerard and Alex Fasciani and previously Nathan Sharp. Uh, it's it's a pop group with uh, four four video game villains is who they are, and Satch plays uh, Ganondorf. But yeah, so shout out to Sh- Satch back. He's pretty uh, he's a pretty cool cat. Nice. My shout out is going towards somebody. Brand new. Uh, the Lord of the Tentacles and the Mist. Yes. So, we recently did a thing for Nando. Yeah. And that got us way more views than we've ever had and doubled our subscriber count. As of this morning, we're at over 3,000 views. And yes, we have doubled our subscriber count since we uploaded that one marvelous scene video. Yeah, one video. And one person decided to pop up in the middle of that. Lord of the Tentacles and the Mist. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, I just really like that name. Yeah, I just, I I get the emails every time we have a new subscriber. And if it's an interesting name, I tell him about it. And so I told him about the Lord of the Tentacles and the Mist, and he's like, well, he's getting a shout out. Right? (laughs) Because what a fucking name. Yeah, it's a great name, man. (laughs) So, yeah, thank you for looking at us and subscribing to us and all that stuff. Hopefully you watch this. Or maybe not, because I'm sure we're a giant disappointment to you. Right. You're just like, oh, this isn't that other video. But that's okay. That is okay. We love, forgive you. Love your name, dude. Or chick. Whatever you are. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Lord would be male, right? You would think so. Yeah. But let's not discriminate based on that. Okay. <gasps> All right, guys. We'll catch you next time for some more Asagao goodness. Thank you so much, guys. Later, please. Bye.